hello to everybody online. We're glad that you can join us this morning. Good morning, everyone. Again, um, be sure that you receive. I'm trying to find a place where I can be seen. Um, be sure that you pick up a communion host before we begin. Uh, you'll need it for consecration during the service. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to our worship service where we will be breaking our communion fast today. And I can't tell you how happy I am that we will be doing this together on this day at this time. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. A little bit smoky, but the sky is still blue, so that's a good sign. A couple of announcements. <clears throat> Thursday night and Friday, we will be, the church is, did I lose? Can you still hear me? Okay. Um, the 133rd Annual Diocesan Convention of the Episcopal Church in Colorado will be beginning on Thursday night with its opening worship hosted by Christ Church in Denver. They're promoting it as an Episcopal Revival whatever that means. Um, but everyone is encouraged and it's open for everyone to join in and participate. So I hope that you will all participate in that, in that service on, um, I think it's seven o'clock on Thursday night. And then on Friday night, they're having their keynote speaker to talk with us and Bishop Kim about a future of hope. How do we navigate this future with hope and grace and love. And that is also open to everyone to participate. So I hope you'll all join in either Thursday night or Friday for these two portions of the Episcopal uh, Convention. It's always a good way just to join together as one body in Christ with all the churches around the state. And so I hope you'll do so. However, if you would rather, um, we'll be beginning our adult faith formation, our Thursday night book study, on Thursday night, and they will be studying Timothy Keller's Generous Justice. It's how do we do social justice through the eyes of Christ and through the eyes of God. And so uh, the books are available on Amazon. I think they're 12 bucks, um, but you can contact uh, Linda Wagner or Vicki Swanson um, who will be co-leading the book study, and I hope you'll all participate. Um, it's a very, it's, it looks like it's a thick book, but it's big print, and it has not large chapters, so it's an eight-week uh, program, which will take us into December. So I hope you'll all participate in that. Other news. I can't think of any other news. We have plumbing in the church. Raise the roof. Yay! <laughs> um, we are working on getting some electrical work finished, and then they'll be doing their um, drywall and paint and last bits of repairs. And uh, there's a plan to reconfigure the kitchen, which is a very good plan. Um, so I hope you will all be pleased with it. It'll help us have more cabinet space and storage space and counter space for when we're able to resume our red door suppers and our indoor dining, dining special events. Save the date, October 18th. We will be having uh, our reception with 
the Right Reverend Kim Lucas, our 11th Bishop in the Episcopal Church in Colorado. She'll be making her first and triennial visit to St. Albans on that day. We'll be having one service at 10 o'clock that day. And it'll either be morning prayer or um, we had some people who would like to be received into the church and have their vows reaffirmed. And so I've presented that to her as well, and I'll be talking with her on Tuesday to formalize those arrangements. So it'll either be morning prayer or a reception and reaffirmation of vows. But I hope you'll all come and meet our new bishop. It's an honor that she will be here with us on that day. And she's an incredible preacher, an incredible uh, person. So I hope you will all join us on that day. Other news are in our Red Door newsletter. Um, please feel free to read it. And um, I'm just so happy to be able to do this. Get dressed up in my church clothes for finally. It's like, wow, I had to look for this. <laughs> it was hidden behind all my other stuff on my door. But now let us let us quiet our hearts and open our minds. Let us fill the light of the Spirit. Wake up inside our hearts. Fill us with the love of God so that we can begin to worship the Lord. I wish to say a special welcome to those who are joining us online. We're glad that you could be with us today. And now, <clears throat> let us listen to our opening hymn, We Have Come to Join in Worship. Our service begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Please stand if you are able. <clears throat> Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be your kingdom, now and forever. Amen. 
Let us listen to our hymn of praise. Lord be with you. Let us pray our collect for the feast of St. Francis. Most high omnipotent God, good Lord, grant your people grace to renounce gladly the vanities of this world, that following the way of blessed Francis we may love, we may for love of you, delight in your whole creation with perfectness of joy. O God, you have made us and all living things. You are even more wonderful than what you have made. We thank you for giving us these pets who bring us joy. As you take care of us, so also we ask your help that we might take care of those who trust us to look after them. By doing this, we share in your own love for all creation. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And let us pray our colleague for today. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. For upon us the abundance of your mercy, for giving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Excuse me, there is more. Part two. <laughs> to be continued. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord.
please stand for the proclamation of the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. May we speak of love in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Today, amongst everything else, is the feast day for St. Francis of Assisi. Born in the early 11, 1100s, Giovanni Bernardone was the child to wealthy merchants. His father dealt in beautiful cloths that were sold to make beautiful dresses and garments for royalty. And Giovanni was named after, the Italian Giovanni means John, and he was named by his mother after John the Baptist. Now, his father, Pietro, was away when, John, when Giovanni was born. And when he came home, he wasn't pleased that his wife, who was very devout, named the child without him there. Because he wasn't so much devout. He was more of a man of the world, relishing in the finest of all things, the finest of clothing, the finest of drinks and culture. And he really liked France a lot. And so he wanted his child to be named Francisco, or Francis, meaning of French, of France. And Francis grew up in all things of privilege, of all things of good culture that wealth can bring. When he went to school, he didn't worry whether or not he was making top grades because he came for money. He didn't need to. You know, they still loved him. He could throw parties, and he was, he was sort of the talk of the town. He loved to party, he loved to drink, he loved good food. And most of all, he wanted to be a knight. The crusades were going on, and he wanted to be part of that crusade. Knights who were glorified and who were important, or important people in their time. And so he went about becoming a knight and going off to fight in the Crusades, that time in Christian, here, that time in Christian history, which I always referred to as Christians behaving badly. Because 
that wasn't a good that wasn't a good mark on the Christian history. But before he could even reach there, Francis was arrested and thrown in jail. And he was chained and manacled for several months in the dark and in the moisture, and he became sick and ill. And when he was released from prison, he was too ill to go fight in the Crusades. And so he decided he would return home in shame, hoping that his shame wouldn't bring dishonor on his family. And as he was headed home from his journey, he had a dream about giving his cloak to a poor knight who was cold. And he really didn't know how to interpret that dream, but it stuck with him. And then as he was passing a church that was in Verona, Italy, a church that probably had a fire in their basement and caused damage upstairs. <clears throat> they couldn't run their plumbing. They didn't have their electrical. They couldn't run their community dinners that they normally did. All of their stuff was in disrepair. He sat and just pondered at the crucifix that was hangling, hanging precariously from the altar. And he heard these words, Francis, repair my church. And that was it. That was his conversion moment. That was his walk to Damascus. To look at Francis's life, one would think of Paul. Paul, who was writing to his beloved church in Philippi. Paul, who also lived a life of privilege, a life that he sets forth in this section to the Philippians. Born of the house of Benjamin, one of the upper classes in the Jewish tribes, you know, he was circumcised on the eighth day. His parents did exactly what they were supposed to do. They raised him. They taught him. He, was a, uh, he believed the way of the Pharisees. He considered himself a Pharisee. The people who were educated and who knew the law. He also proclaimed himself a persecutor of the church. He had so much zeal in the Jewish faith and Jewish tradition. He knew he was walking the walk that, walk, that he needed to walk until he walked to Damascus and had that conversion experience. And we know what happened, because he explains it in his letter. All that who I was, all that that I thought I was important to me, I regard now as nothing more but rubbish, as loss. Now, when they're talking about rubbish, they're using a more, a nicer word for, it's sort of like doo-doo, is what he was talking about. It didn't mean anything to Paul anymore, because his life was a life of Christ. His life was a life of discipleship. His life was not his own. His life was meant for the life of others a giving of himself for others, as Christ gave of himself for others. This is the life that Francis lived. When he went home, he started to give away all of his father's possessions, to the point where his father had him arrested for robbery and stealing. And as he was brought before the church council, the church who was the authorities at that time, Francis made a declaration and said, you know, you are not my father. Sort of like Luke, I am your father. No, you're not my father. <clears throat> he said, God is my father. And all that I have is God's. And he took off all his clothes and he walked down the streets of Assisi, according to tradition, naked, to live the life of St. Francis. St. Francis, who we celebrate today, a life where he gave of himself for others, the lepers and the poor and the outcast. Paul is writing to his beloved people in Philippi, a, a beloved community that has been divided, divided by egos, divided by different ideologies, by difference in what Jesus is telling them to do. 
And they are saying, well, I'm better because I'm this, and I'm better because I'm that. And Paul's like, no, regard that as lost, because what we do, we do as Christ together. Look at what unites us and not divides us. Beloved, today is also World Communion Day, a day created by the Presbyterian Church to celebrate the oneness that we all have together as the body of Christ. And that which unites us is Holy Communion, that divine meal where we all partake of Christ's body and blood. That is what unites Christians not only in this town and in this state, but around this country and around the world. It is Christ's body that unites us as one. And as Paul did, and as Francis did, when we are united, all that we were, all that might make us special, just falls away. That is the true discipleship to live our lives for the lives of others. That is what Paul is calling us to do, and that is the life that Francis lived. Interesting story. The church wanted to make Francis a priest, and he objected. He said, well, if I must, make me a deacon. And he became a deacon, but under protest, because the church had to have that control. But Francis could not be controlled. He did the work that God called him to do, to go forth and minister to the sick and the poor and the outcast. Today, as we celebrate World Communion and we gather together as one body in Christ, how we celebrate his oneness, let us live the life that Francis lived. Let us live our lives for the lives of others. This world, this time, this now needs it. Amen. Yes. Amen. That's an amen in dog talk. Our service continues on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer. You may stand if you are able, or you may remain seated, whichever you are most comfortable with. But let us affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God. prayers of the people are in your bulletin. Let us give thanks to God, our Creator, for all the gifts so freely bestowed upon us, and for the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and sea. We thank you, we thank you Lord. For the richness of the mountains, plains, and rivers, we thank, we thank you, you, Lord. 
for all that is gracious in the lives of men and women. We thank, thank you, Lord. For all creatures that breathe and move and have life, we thank, thank you, Lord. For the songs of birds and the loveliness of flowers and trees, we thank you, Lord. For the trust you have shown in giving into our care these, our pets, we thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. That, it, that each pet here may be treasured with care, we thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. That we, we may love and honor all your works, O God, we, we thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. That we may continue to grow in our grateful enjoyment of your abundant creation. We to the honor you, and glory Lord. of your name, now and forever, we pray to you, Lord. As you all have heard, our president and our first lady have been diagnosed as or tested positive for the coronavirus and is showing symptoms of COVID-19, as well as several members of our government and leadership. They've joined the 7 million people around this world who have been diagnosed. And so let us pray for them, for their recovery, and for all those who are sick from this pandemic. Let us pray. O Father of mercies and God of all comfort, our only help in time of need, we humbly beseech thee to behold, visit, and relieve thy sick servants for whom our prayers are desired. Look upon them with the eyes of thy mercy. Comfort them with a sense of thy goodness. Preserve them from the temptations of the enemy and give them patience under their affliction. In thy good time, restore them to health and enable them to lead the residue of their lives in thy fear and to thy glory. And grant that finally they may dwell with thee in life everlasting through Christ our Lord. Amen. Are there any other special prayers or concerns that we can raise up at this time? I see a foot over there. It kind of looks like a Muppet. <laughs> Let us pray for... Vic, as he recovers from his surgery. Most holy and eternal God, we give you thanks for your beloved child and your faithful servant, Vic. We just ask that you continue to be with him as he recovers from his surgery. Knit together that which needs to be knitted. Relieve him from all pain. Help him to manage to navigate without weight bearing on that foot. And be with Cheryl and strengthen her in her time of being a caregiver. Lord, look look with compassion on both your servants, your beloved children, because they are very important to each and every one of us. We give you thanks, O oh Lord, for his good surgery and his good recovery. And we just ask that you continue to walk this journey with both of them at this time. And Lord, we ask that you bless them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Any other special prayers or concerns? Is anybody celebrating a birthday or anniversary this week and would like to come forward for a blessing? It's either a double birthday or an anniversary. An anniversary! Yay! How many years? 20. 20. That's wonderful. And when is your anniversary? Awesome. Awesome. That's right. <laughs> Let's pray for, for Nita and Arnold on their anniversary. O oh, gracious and ever-living God, look mercifully on your children as they remember the covenant they have made. Grant them your blessing and assist them with your grace, that with true fidelity and steadfast love they may honor their vows and continue living together faithfully in this life, and in the age to come have life everlasting. Amen. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you both and remain with you as you walk this journey around the sun in love and joy and peace. Amen. Give them a clap. 20 years. That's a good thing. <clears throat> no other birthdays or anniversaries. So what I would like to do is bring up pets one at a time. So let's start with this way, and we'll work that way. And if you forgot your pet, or you would like to come back from 10.30 to noon, 
we will be continuing to bless the pets as a draw on a drive up method. Hi. What's your name? Betty. Hi, Betty. Oh, Betty the beautiful. Betty, you are blessed in the name of the God who created you, and may you and are you the owner? Mani. May you find life together and find joy in the God who created you. Amen. Do you like a goodie? <laughs> She's like, I don't know. I don't eat in person in public. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> She's like, I'll just stay up here, okay? <laughs> And what's your name? Jude. Jude? Dude. 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 Dude, you are blessed in the name of God who created you. And may you and Gary enjoy life together in God. Do you want a cookie too? May I get a chopper? Okay. <laughs> Yes, it's now your turn. And remind me her name. Maggie. Maggie. Hey. Maggie, you are blessed in the name of God who created you. And may you and Anne enjoy life together with God. Hey, Maggie. Would you like a cookie? Maggie. <laughs> Anne, would you like a cookie? Huh? I know. I have lots of goodies, by the way. I, they came in like a pack of 500. So please, please. Yeah, we'll be feeding the animals from now until forever. For all of those who pets or might be at home, may you be blessed in the name of God, the creator, redeemer, and sustainer. May you and your animals enjoy life together and find joy with the God who created you. Amen. And now, beloved, let us say together the prayer of St. Francis. Is, I don't know if it's in your bulletin. Is it in there? No? <clears throat> you have your prayer books? Let us turn to page 800. Eight hundred and thirty-three. And let's say this together. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand, and to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we are received, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Jesus came to be the great peacemaker of the world, and so, beloved, let us share God's peace with you, your family and your neighbor. The peace and love of God be always with you. Let us share God's peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. To everybody online, peace be with you. If somebody would bring up the offertory during the hymn, O Lord our God, you are worthy to receive glory and honor and power because you have created all things and by your will they were created and have their being.
I feel so tall. Our service continues on page 361 of the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you are greatly glorified in the assembly of your saints. All your creatures praise you and your faithful servants bless you, confessing before the rulers of the world the great name of your only Son. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. If you could all raise your bread at this time. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take Eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. For by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. For those who are online, in, blessed, in union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar at your church, where the blessed body and blood are offered this day, and remembering particularly St. Albans and all those worshiping here. 
We long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory, and particularly for the blessings given us. We believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since we cannot be at this time, since I cannot at this time receive communion, we pray that you come into our hearts. Unite us yourselves with you and embrace you with all your heart and soul and mind. Let nothing separate us from you. Let us serve you in this life until by your grace you come to your, we come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Beloved people of St. Albans, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ which was given for you, preserve your body and soul into everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Please let us all now consume our host. Our post-communion prayer is on page 365 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Jesus our Lord. Amen. Beloved, on this feast day of St. Francis, always remember that life is short. And we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make this journey with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and know that you yourselves are loved by a loving and living God who gave us pets to show us what it means to love unconditionally, to love graciously and wantonly. Let us mimic our pets and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. And now our closing hymn, Grace Alone.
Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. For those of you who are online, we wish you a blessed week. For everybody here, have a blessed week. Amen. Amen.